Welcome to the Library of Virginia. I'm Mary Julian, one of the curators of our exhibition, We Demand Women's Suffrage in Virginia, which opened earlier this year as part of the library's centennial celebration of the ratification of the 19th Amendment guaranteeing women's right to vote. Since the library is currently closed during the current health emergency, we wanted to bring some parts of the exhibition to you. Today, I wanted to talk about a couple of items that show how racial discrimination impacted the suffrage campaign in Virginia, which was going on during the era of Jim Crow and segregation. African-American women had been interested in the issue of women's suffrage since the end of the Civil War, when African-American men gained the right to vote. But when white women organized the Equal Suffrage League of Virginia in 1909 and the Virginia branch of what became the National Women's Party in 1915, African-American women were excluded from membership. But we know that they were strong advocates for women's voting rights. They discussed women's suffrage at their women's club meetings, attended public speeches by suffragists, and participated in public debates in their communities. When they had the opportunity, they marched in parades, like Lynchburg native Jimmy Bug, who marched in the National Suffrage Parade in Washington, D.C. in 1913 with members of Delta Sigma Theta, the sorority she helped organize at Howard University. Prominent women like Portsmouth community activist Josephine Norcom and Richmond Bank president and civil rights advocate Maggie Walker spoke out in favor of women's suffrage. Why were white women so reluctant to include African American women in the fight for suffrage? Proposals to make any changes to suffrage legislation aroused fears among white Virginians that African Americans would return to politics as they had done in the years after the Civil War and that they would take control of state government. White politicians in Virginia spent decades undoing the reforms of the post-war period, and in 1902 had successfully disfranchised almost all African-American men in the state. Anti-suffragists played up this fear and repeatedly made the argument that if women gained the right to vote, then African-American women would start voting in large numbers and threaten white supremacy in Virginia. Two items in the Equal Suffrage League records in the collections here at the Library of Virginia provide a vivid illustration of these fears. One is a leaflet reprinting an article from the Richmond Evening Journal, warning that 29 Virginia counties would, quote, go under Negro rule if woman suffrage passed. The writer listed the counties where African Americans would, quote, have absolute and immediate control if women could vote, and concludes with the chilling statement that, quote, white rule in Virginia will be swinging on a mighty thin line. This language is painful and disturbing to read today, but it was meant to frighten women's suffrage supporters into changing their minds. Virginia suffragists pushed back with their own arguments. The Equal Suffrage League wanted to keep the issue of race out of the picture, but the League published this leaflet on equal suffrage and the Negro vote to show that women's suffrage was, quote, not a menace to white supremacy. As Equal Suffrage League President Lila Mee Valentine often pointed out, the Virginia Constitution effectively prevented most African-American men from voting through literacy tests and the poll tax, and would be just as effective as keeping African-American women from the ballot box. And Valentine and the Equal Suffrage League were correct. Although thousands of African-American women registered to vote after the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920, many more thousands of white women registered, and there was no threat to so-called white rule in Virginia. So while we celebrate the ratification of the 19th Amendment, we must also recognize that not all women immediately gained the right to vote, and the fight continued for decades, and still does in some ways today, before African American women and other women of color were able to freely exercise their right to vote. When the library is open again, I hope you will visit our exhibition and get to see these pieces of history for yourself. In the meantime, you can learn more about African American suffragists and their fight for voting rights at our website, edu.lva.virginia.gov slash we demand. Thanks for joining us.